Okay, maybe we're getting a little carried away with making our home smarter. Partly true, but sometimes there are products that are really useful. So here is the Xiaomi flower kit. As the name suggests, it is for your plants. This sensor checks whether your plants have enough nutrition, light and water. So in this tutorial, let's not forget to keep them healthy and water them on time by using HomeKit. Hello and welcome to my channel. And if you're into smart home DIY and obviously love the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, then there are tons of tutorial videos you can use. So please, please do take a look and don't be shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Well, I was looking to acquire some cool and cheap sensors for monitoring our indoor plant's health and importantly, make it work with Apple HomeKit. And that's where the Xiaomi Flower Care allows you to monitor your plant's vitals. All you have to do is stick it into the soil and pair it and boom, you now know whether your plant is thirsty or whether it wants to sunbathe for a while. Now this sensor works via the Bluetooth protocol and supports version 4.1, which consumes less energy, but its range is limited to 50 meters. Something to keep in mind. Another point is that your controller must of course support Bluetooth. Now this sensor measures humidity, soil fertility and moisture values through the four metal dots at the end of the fox. The temperature and lux values are measured at the top of the sensor. Well, the sensor comes with a companion app called Plant Care and you can use it to get more of the sensor. But by now, you all know me very well. I wanted to monitor my plant's health in Apple HomeKit, uh, build some automations and at the same time automatically generate a graph in the Eve app. So for all of this to work and integrate the sensor with Apple HomeKit, we will need obviously a Xiaomi Flower Care uh, sensor to a Bluetooth controller. We will be using this Raspberry Pi that we have here free and to enable the cross-platform integration We will be using Homebridge plus I've also left uh, links in the description to install Homebridge and you can use this with hoops as well As always I've broken down the video with into three parts with the timestamps and description They are one we're going to install the noble Bluetooth package. This allow all of the integration to happen Two, we're going to go ahead and install the Homebridge plugin to expose the sensor to Apple HomeKit Three, then we're going to see all of the data in the Eve app and build a very simple automation. So let's not waste our time like I always say and let's jump into this tutorial. Okay, the first part of this uh, tutorial is to install the Noble package, basically that enables the Raspberry Pi to connect with the sensor and collect data using the Bluetooth protocol. So let's go and do that now. What we're going to do is open up terminal and we're going to log in into this Raspberry Pi over here. Okay, so we already logged into the terminal, but before we go ahead and install the packages, let's quick quickly go to the website of the Noble and you're going to see over here all of the information that you can install on the multiple systems and all of the commands uh, that's listed into this website. So basically you're going to install the Bluetooth uh, central module into your Raspberry Pi. So let's go back to terminal. And as a best practice, I always go ahead and update all of the Linux packages. So with the Linux packages all updated, what we're going to do now is go to this website and copy the command to install the Noble Bluetooth packages and paste. Now, mind you, I've already been, uh, I've already installed uh, the Noble package on in this Raspberry Pi just for this tutorial and also connect with the sensor. So you may see that the packages are already installed, but please use this command to install the Noble packages. Hit enter. So your installation will all depend on the internet connectivity. It will install all the packages and you'll see the command prompt. Now, once the packages are installed, the next command, what you want to do is go into the Bluetooth shell to enable the Bluetooth radio and to extract the MAC address that will require in the Homebridge plugin configuration. So this is the command sudo Bluetooth CTL. You're going to paste it. And you will see that over here that it's already pairable. If it's not pairable, all you have to type is power on. Okay, so this enables the Bluetooth uh, radio and then from there we're going to type in scan on to check if it can pick up the broadcast of the sensors. 
So you will see over here the MAC address of the flower care. So we're just going to copy this and paste it into our node. And then once we are done, all you have to type in over here, exit. So just with this, now we've enabled the package. We're all good to go ahead and uh, configure the plugin. This is the fastest way to get the MAC address of the uh, sensor. But you can also use other app, uh, applications as well that are uh, built in for Android or iOS. But I always found this the easiest way of getting the sensor. Now let's go hop over and get the uh, plugin installed and configured. So let's go ahead and log into our Homebridge dashboard. And before we go and install the plugin, let's go to the plugin website. So this plugin is more latest, it's six months old. However, if you scroll through the documentation, it's still at the plugin template. So the developer hasn't updated the documentation, but don't worry, in this tutorial, we'll see how it can be done uh, and conf uh, with the configuration. So let's go back up and let's copy this text over here and we go to Homebridge plugins. It's a very easy way of picking up the plugin for installation. Hit enter. You're gonna click on install. Give it a couple of seconds for the installation to complete. Once the installation is complete, you will see that these are all of the fields you want to populate uh, into the configuration. So the first thing it requests is for the MAC address. So we save the MAC address over here. So let's copy. Go to the conf configuration and paste it. Now, the refresh data interval, it's 300 seconds. So, short of the time, the Raspberry Pi is gonna get data from the Bluetooth. What happens with this? You're gonna drain your battery quicker. So this is one of the things I learned over the couple of days. So I left it at 300 seconds and every five minutes it was uh, polling for data or uploading data uh, into the Raspberry Pi and was fetching data. So lower the uh, time, uh, you're gonna drain your battery faster. So in this case, what I would recommend is pull data every 15 minutes or every uh, 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to uh, leave it as it is just for the uh, demo. But if you want, you can increase this interval time and um, it should still work, but you'll also save on your battery power as well. So I'm gonna leave it at 300. Now the humidity alert level, low le uh, light and low battery, when you fill in this value over here, you're basically enabling sensors that you can get visual alerts uh, uh, through uh, automation. So this, this part is very useful in enabling those sensors uh, to give you those visual alerts using automations. So for now, I'm just going to put in some values so we can see how it works. So if my humidity well is at 20, low light is at uh, 100, and low battery is at 20. And I'm just going to click on save. And then we'll go ahead and restart the home bridge. Okay, as soon as the uh, home bridge restarts, you're going to see that it's going to try to connect to the accessory with the MAC address provided. So you can see over here that it's already picked up the data. So right now it shows the Lux values, the temperature, the moisture and the fertility that this uh, pot has. And if I go to accessories, you'll see to that uh, it has got those sensors already enabled. So this one's from a prior installation, so you can ignore that. But the ones over here has the uh, sensors enabled as well as data. And if you go to status over here, you'll see that, that this is showing exceeded minimum uh, value. And if you go to the GitHub page and go to pull request, you see that uh, there is a uh, workflow that's pending to be approved. So when the uh, developer approves this workflow, it's going to fix that uh, issue, but uh, it doesn't uh, uh, impact the uh, data collection and how the whole uh, thing works together. So going back to Homebridge, if you see over here, it's collecting all of the data. And uh, we just want to show you a quick example. If I uh, scroll up, this was the values just before recording this uh, video. And if you see to that, like the fertility was zero and later it went up to 100. So what I did was I just poured some water into it and you'll see that the readings have changed in the moisture and the fertility. So based on the polling time of 300 seconds, the data is pushed to the Raspberry Pi. And this is not connected uh, uh, 
continuously. It only broadcasts the message and picks it up. So even if you install multiple devices, you, it will be able to collect that data when you configure the MAC address of each of the sensor. Now, if I were to go to HomeKit and check, so you will see that the sensor is open. So let's go to show details in my plant name, low humidity. So this is the, the uh, sensor that was just added to HomeKit and you can get more information. So you can display the contact sensor, uh, blinds. So you can change this data and where you want to. So I'm just going to move it to sensors. That's the default room and close this and we go to sensors and you'll see that it's over here. So show details and I can just call this red hot and save it. So you can see the battery level, you can see all of the data available as well. You can see the sensors that are open. Now it's in HomeKit. Let's go quickly over to the Heave app to see what more data and what all you can see with this configuration. Let's go ahead and open up the Eve app and let's go to rooms. Let's go to sensors and you'll see that the sensors are your my plant name. Okay. And we're going to tap on it and you'll see that the data is showing over. So we just installed, we're not going to see a lot of more data, but every five minutes, minutes is going to connect with the sensor and upload the data over here. So we can see the temperature. You can see the end. You will be able to see the graph, the humidity, the light level and especially the contact sensor that's open up over here. And if you scroll down, you will see that the soil fertility and also the soil moisture and the battery level. So very useful data that you can get over here. Very easy way of adding the automation. So we just go to automation. We can go add rule and we're going to select, let's say the contact sensor for uh, humidity, for an example, whenever it's active, say add go next go next and we can select a scene over here so you know if not we can go ahead and uh, select other devices so let's go ahead and add in a forest scene say next and you can put a name as flower flower it done so every time this uh, sensor is added uh, activated you will get this light going on on your humidity and if you go to apple home kit automation you see that value over here as well so is that simple, you can change the scene, you can add in other automation. So over time, if you go back to the Eve app, you'll see this data populating for you. So you can get an understanding on your plant's vital health, if it needs nutrition, water, or any other assistance. Now to put this together, the Me Flower Care is a simple yet effective tool that anyone can pick up and use. And if you're really serious about your plant care, willing to spend time, monitor your plant's vitals, and don't want them to die, then this device right here is for you. And through HomeKit, you can gather data and build your automations and a worthy investment for your green friends. And my friends, that's a wrap up. Now to keep all of this going, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button because you know, that's a real driver. That's a real motivator. And if there's anything I can help you with, don't feel shy to leave a comment down below to keep the conversation going. So until the next time, my friends, stay safe, have a nice day. Cheers and happy automation.